Okay, in exercise number two, we're going to learn how to create a horizontal alignment using the geometry tools. The first thing I want to do is I want to attach my aerial imagery or my aerial topo DGN so you can get an idea of the uh, road that we're going to be dealing with and the alignment that we're going to be creating. So to do that, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go to the Home tab. I'm going to select the Attach Tools and I want to attach the Arial Topo DGN as a reference file. So we're going to come over here and click on References. References dialog will appear. I'm going to go over to Tools, Attach, and I want to select my Arial Topo. This has our aerial imagery attached to it. I want to set the attachment method, make sure it's set to Coincident World, and then we're going to click on Open to attach it to our Geometry DGN file. So let's close the uh, references dialog here and take a look at our imagery. And you can see here we have a road. This is London Road. London Road runs from south to north. And I have some circles drawn here that represent the PI points that we're going to be using. So we have PI number 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating some tangent lines between each one of these PI points and then we're going to come in and put in some horizontal curves between each one of those tangent lines. So, but before we do that, one thing I want to uh, mention here is before you place your geometric elements, one of the first things you want to do is you want to go up to geometry and we want to set our feature definition. Okay, now what a feature definition is, is those are used to control the symbology, annotation, and various other properties that are applied to our geometric elements as they're created. Okay, so basically it controls the display, what they look like as you're placing them. So we're going to go over here and we're going to go to the feature definition toolbar. We're going to select that. And that brings up the feature definition toolbar, which we can dock anywhere inside of Open Roads Designer. So I'm just going to dock it over here up to the left. And you'll notice a, a pull down here, arrow here, or an arrow where we can get to the feature definitions. These feature definitions live in a DGN library that's delivered with the workspace and the software. So since we're doing a, an alignment, we're going to come over here and select the alignment category or the alignment folder. And underneath here, we have access to some of these other feature definitions. For what we're doing, we're going to be using the geometry baseline or geom baseline feature definition. And to set that active, we're going to go over here and, and press the Set Active Feature Definition button. We're going to click on this to make that the active feature definition that we're going to use as we create our geometric elements. Now before we go ahead and create the geometry elements, uh, it's usually a good idea to review the civil formatting options in the design file. The civil formatting is used to control the formatting and the precision of the geometry in a design file. So I want to go take a look at that real quick just to make sure everything's set up the way I want it to be. So we're going to go up to File. We'll go down to Settings. We'll come over here to the Settings and choose the File category. And under here we'll go to Design File Settings. And notice here we have a Civil Formatting category. And this is where you can adjust things such as your coordinate settings for how you want your format to be for your coordinates. Do you want it X, Y? or northing and easting. Uh, you can set the precision for that as well as the station settings and some other settings that are in here that you may want to set ahead of time before you begin your design. So it's usually a good idea to take a look and, and review those before you begin. So I'm just going to leave those as is and uh, continue on. So let's just click OK and go up here to the arrow and return to our ribbon interface Let's begin placing our first tangent line. We're going to zoom into this area here where our first two PI points are, and we're going to create a line between these two PI points. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my Geometry tab, and I'm going to go to Lines, and I'm going to select the Line Between Two Points command. And you're going to notice the uh, Line dialog pops up here, so you can key in a distance or direction if you want to. You can also see the active feature definition that has been set and also the uh, feature name. This is the default feature name. 
um, that's going to be created for this first element. So also notice that the heads up prompt that's attached to your cursor is it's uh, prompting you to enter a start point. So our start point is going to be down over here at PI number one. So we're going to use the snaps down here at the bottom of the screen to snap to the center of that circle. So now we want to snap to the center of the circle. So we're going to come down here and look at the snap toolbar and make sure the AccuSnap is toggled on. And we'll go over here to the center point snap because we want to snap to the center of the circle. So we're going to left click that, move our cursor to the circle near the circle and left click to accept and you're going to see now that my line is being dynamically placed and you can see the dynamic text that's attached to the line. I have the direction as well as the distance that's attached to the line and it's continually changing as I move the line about inside of the, the DGN file here. I also have a heads up prompt attached to my cursor so I can key in a specific distance as well as a direction. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to key in a distance of 546 feet to get us up to this uh, PI point there. So I'm going to just keep, go on my keyboard here and key in 546. I'm going to press enter to lock in that value. And notice how it locks in the value, but I can still rotate the line around dynamically. And you can see how the uh, direction is changing. And this time, what we're going to do is we're going to key in a direction. So I'm going to use my right arrow key on my keyboard or my left arrow key, it doesn't really matter. We're just going to toggle to the direction field on my heads up prompt. So I'm going to press the right arrow key. That's going to get us over to the line direction field. And here's where I can key in my direction. And I'm going to use a, a direction of north, one degree, 33 minutes, zero seconds west. And we can do that by just going into the key in field. Okay, to key in the line direction, we just need to come in here and key that in on your keyboard. So I'm just going to key in north, 0, 1. Use the caret option on your keyboard. 33 minutes, 0 seconds west. And I'm going to press the enter key on my keyboard to lock in that value. And you can see now the line is locked in at that distance and direction. So I'm going to left click to accept all that. And then my line is placed. Now one other thing to note is uh, the line was placed. It's using the active feature definition that I selected. It's also using a default name of geom baseline. Um, typically when I'm placing uh, geometric elements, I don't tend to use names, but if you feel like you need to name a particular element or feature, feel free to uh, key in a name here as needed. Before we continue creating the, uh, the rest of the geometry, I want to point out a few things here about the, the geometric elements. Uh, geometric elements are rule-based and they provide design intent and basically the design intent builds associations and relationships between the civil elements. So let's take a look at the uh, the rules or that are associated to this particular element. So if we come over here to the element selection tool, I'm going to select the line. You're going to notice that I have a distance a distance and a direction field here, or a length and a direction field. These are referred to as our text manipulators. Uh, the distance and the direction are also the two rules that are associated to this particular element. So if we need to modify the uh, direction or the distance, we can click on the direction text manipulator and key in a new value. As well as the distance or the length, we can click on the text there and enter a new length or distance. Another thing we can do is while the line is still selected you'll see these circles that appear with these arrows. These are the drag handles. And this also gives you the ability to manipulate the line or modify the line. So we can trim or extend the line by just grabbing the, uh, the arrow up here to trim or extend it. And we can also rotate the line around by grabbing the arrow to the left here to uh, change the uh, rotation or direction. And notice how the uh, text manipulator, the direction, is dynamically changing on the line as we uh, rotate it around. One last thing I want to make a note of about the, the line itself is when you select it, and because we snapped to this circle when we started, you're going to notice there's a center point snap indicator that appears on the, on the element. That center snap indicator shows that the beginning of the line was placed by snapping to that center of the circle. So again, this is an example of design intent where a relationship exists between the beginning of the line and the circle. So you need to be aware of this because if the circle is moved for some reason, the line will move since there's a relationship there. 
and if the circle is deleted, the relationship will, re will be removed, but the line will remain. So this is just an important concept to remember and understand with regards to snapping to elements when you're using civil geometry or open rows designer geometry. Now when you select a line, we can, we can adjust the dynamic text as I've shown. Uh, another option that we have available to us is if we take our cursor and we hover over the element, you'll see a context sensitive menu appear with some other tools that are related to the geometry. And if we would just take a quick look at the properties of the line, we click on the properties tool, you can see the properties list the start point, the end point, the feature name, the feature definition, and the length and the direction. So at any time if you need to edit the line or the feature name or feature definition you can do that here via the properties tool. And just to deselect the line you can just left click in the view and deselect the line. Okay let's continue on here so we can create the rest of our tangent lines for our alignment. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit here so we can see the rest of our PI points. I'm going to go back up to our place line between points command and I'm going to select that and for our start point we're going to select the end point of our previously created tangent line so I'm just going to snap to that point and left click to accept it again notice the uh, dynamics of the uh, the geometry so what we're gonna do before we place this last endpoint I wanna come up here and actually toggle on the chain commands tool what that's going to do is it's going to enable us to automatically connect to the previous element with having, without having to select the start point each time. So I'm going to turn this on and I'm just going to approximate the center point of PI number 3. And then notice we're still in the command. We're going to go up to place this next tangent line at for PI number 4 and then we're going to go and place the uh, last tangent line up to PI number 5. And then once we're done we want to right click to complete and now we have our tangent lines created. If you found this video helpful please give it a like. If you want to see more such series consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.